You're hopefully familiar with the concept of multiband compression. Maybe you've even seen this plugin. Or this plugin. Or the. Uh, no, no, not you. Get out of here. Disgusting. Anyhow, it's been possible for quite some time to compress multiple areas of the spectrum separately by using multiband splits. In this case, you're using filters to divide the signal into multiple parts, which are then compressed separately. Actually, multiband splits aren't even limited to just compressors. Maybe you've heard of this plugin called Multipass by Kilohertz, which allows you to multiband basically anything in their arsenal. Just like that, I put chorus on only my mid frequencies. Neat! Unfortunately, the laws of physics do not allow us to have nice things. Which means that all of this fun comes with a huge caveat. This caveat is what we'll be talking about today. First, I should explain something simple. Here's an audio clip of a sine wave with another one right below it. However, the lower sine wave is moving in the opposite direction. Let's listen to what it sounds like. Oh, uh, wait, there's no sound. Actually, this is correct because the clips are perfectly out of phase. They are the perfect opposites. The vibrations of the waveforms cancel each other out. If the signals aren't out of phase, they will be added together and the volume of the sine wave will increase instead. This process plays an integral part in the use of filters, because if you use a filter, some maths inside the plugin calculates the signal that needs to be subtracted or added from the original in order to achieve the desired effect. If you've been producing for a while, you've probably attempted to create your own multiband split using high-pass and low-pass filters at some point or another. However, you may have come to the conclusion that this does not sound quite right. Somehow, there's a hole in my drum loop. It seems that some of the frequencies on the filter split are going out of phase, resulting in part of the signal cancelling out. You can see it here. This line represents phase, and every time it touches the 90 degree line, it's perfectly out of phase, just like the sine waves in our example. Evidently, high pass and low pass filters aren't really made for this sort of thing. So, how do multiband plugins split their bands? The way multiband plugins split bands is through the use of a filter type called the all pass filter. The all pass filter is a special filter type that doesn't change the volume of any specific frequency. Instead, it's made out of two special high-pass and low-pass filters referred to as crossover filters. These high-pass and low-pass filters perfectly connect to one another, giving us the flat frequency response you see here. Unfortunately, this flat frequency response isn't free, so in order to achieve a clean split like this, some phase rotation has to happen. In a nutshell, this means that everything below the frequency split will be ever so slightly delayed. Now it's officially time to reveal the dark little secret of Ableton Live's EQ3, which is that EQ3 actually isn't an EQ at all, because it doesn't use any of the traditional filter types associated with EQs. Rather, it's two crossover filters with volume knobs attached to it. This means that yeah, EQ3 delays the lower signal twice, once below each of the two crossover points inside the plugin. I actually think it's good that EQ3 works this way, because now it has become the perfect tool for making your own multiband splits. Simply make a bunch of parallel chains, put an EQ free on each of them, and now disable the other bands on each. And voila! Perfectly flat band splits. If you're using another DAW, I'd recommend you to get a separate plugin for making band splits, just like this one. This slight phase delay that occurs when splitting bands can actually be heard quite easily. Here are two clicks. One with an EQ free on it, and another one without EQ free. Did you notice how the second click sounded slightly different? We can exaggerate the effect quite easily. Here's a kick drum. All we have to do is duplicate the instances of EQ3 and stack more of these crossover filters on the same spot. After a few instances, the phase shift has become completely absurd, but it sounds kind of cool. In the last few years, this outpass delay effect has been popularized by a plugin made by Kilohertz called Disperser. Disperser is a plugin that basically stacks a whole bunch of these mysterious outpass filters at one spot, creating the phase delay intentionally. And honestly, the Disperser effect is absolutely great, especially for making fat kicks, because it allows you to elongate or smear the signal's travel time at a certain frequency. You can also use it to make things sound wetter or more bubbly, like this saw wave here. 
smearing the sound is kind of like stretching chewing gum, so be wary that the volume of the waveform will be thinner in the dispersed part. Whenever I use Disperser to elongate kick drums, I usually follow it up by some other effect like saturation or compression to compensate for the volume hole created by the stretching. Generally speaking, if you want your kick to sound boomy, like a huge club kick, all you have to do is make the knock longer, which is the area around 100 Hz. Disperser happens to be the perfect tool for that. Recently, I've even been finding some metal tracks that have dispersory kicks, so that might be something worth checking out if you're active in that genre. So do all band splits create the disperser effect? Well, the answer is yes. This is something you should be super aware of whenever you use multiband splits, because simply just having them puts an ever so slight amount of disperser on your signal. For most melodic sounds this doesn't really matter much to be honest, but oftentimes on drums it can make all the difference, causing layers to misalign, for example. Since OTT is a multiband compressor, OTT also introduces a slight amount of disperser effect, although you should be worrying about other things first if you use OTT. This is why it sounds weird when you run Serum's internal multiband compressor in parallel, because the disperser effect created by the band split starts phase cancelling with the dry signal, creating notches. Actually, you can recreate the disperser effect with livestock multiband compressor pretty easily, simply just by disabling one of the band splits and duplicating it a whole bunch. It's not just crossover or all-pass filters that create these phase delays. All filters do it to a certain extent. Really steep high-pass and low-pass filters also create noticeable phase smearing, referred to as ring. Whenever you increase filter steepness, part of the filter process is duplicated over and over again, so just like how stacking all-pass filters makes the disperser effect worse, having steeper EQ filters creates more ring. Whenever you try to find a quote-unquote solution to this quote-unquote problem, you'll hear the term linear phase being thrown around a whole lot online. Linear phase filters were originally designed to eliminate filter smearing. In order to achieve this goal, the filter signal that's added or subtracted in the EQ process is delayed back in time to keep things aligned. The problem is that this time shift introduces pre-ring instead of post-ring, which is especially noticeable on transient-heavy sounds like drums. So, in the end it's pick your poison, really. Do you want to have your face smear before or after the transient? In the case of band splits, I would argue that oftentimes having a little disperser effect in your sound is actually not a bad thing, especially since we concluded that it sounds great on drums. As long as you don't use outrageously steep filters inside your EQs, face ringing shouldn't really be anything you should be worried about. Fun fact! Since linear phase filters had their ring realigned, it is possible to safely run them in parallel with the original signal without creating notches. However, you're honestly just better off automating the mix knob, as it does the same as the amount knob on the stock Ableton Live compressor. It reduces the ratio on all of your bands, giving you basically the same effect, except without latency. Before we move on to the final section of this video, I should probably cover that FabFilter Pro MB has a special mode where the bands essentially turn into a dynamic EQ, foregoing the need for crossover filters. Each of the bands is essentially a bell filter now. I'm pretty sure that this is the mode that it's set to in its default setting, but maybe sometimes you're going to want the disperser effect created by band splits, so the other method is still available. Remember how in my serum example, parallel crossover filters created notches? Well, it turns out, you're probably already really familiar with this particular notch. Phasers use the exact same technique to create their filter poles. So actually, creating your own phaser is pretty easy. All you have to do is run Disperser in parallel. There's this video on YouTube by someone named Boraska, and it has 70 views. It's called Accurate Imitation of Kilohertz Disperser for free in any DAW, and I recommend you check it out, because he goes over a bunch more of this filter magic if you're interested. One of the things that blew me away most is that my intro example with the filled band split is actually not that far off. It turns out that the maths line up in such a way that if you duplicate the filter twice, it actually turns into a perfect crossover filter, making it possible to create your own. All I have to do is just take the rack, 
duplicate both filters, and then we have a crossover filter. And yes, indeed, if I duplicate this rack a whole bunch, I will get the disperser effect we know and love. Although I don't recommend it, because loading this many EQs for a disperser effect is kind of inefficient. Most other EQs also use this algorithm, so it's worth trying this out in your own DAW if you're interested in playing around with it. Okay, so we talked about a lot of stuff in this video, so I'm going to summarize a little bit. Originally, I had a whole part in this video here where I talk about other ways to circumvent it, but honestly, it's not really a huge problem, in my opinion. Uh, it's more just interesting to know about it. Um, and even if you didn't really follow everything I was talking about in the video, that's totally fine, because the most important thing I was trying to get across is my, like, my mindset, like how I try to figure everything out to the core, you know? Um, so if there's any takeaway from watching all of these videos, is try to figure out what everything does and, you know, explore the physics of music.